So how do you get the best weapons and armor sets early on in Assassin's Creed Valhalla? In today's video I'll be showing you how this system works. Because it's something you should really start taking advantage of early on if you want to get some of the best gear in the game. In fact by using this method of getting the best weapons and armor in Assassin's Creed Valhalla you can actually also grab all the armor sets, mounts and weapons in the shop for free without actually spending any real world money. But before we do start just so you know every single weapon that you find in the game can be upgraded to mythic quality using a blacksmith. It used to be called legendary or gold quality but now they call it mythic quality. Like you can upgrade this sax dagger to superior then flawless and then all the way to mythic and then you also unlock more rune slots that you can use to boost the attack damage or whatever else you want. However to upgrade the weapon's quality you must use ingots, carbon, nickel and tungsten which you acquire by raiding settlements and just finding in secret treasure chests in different leveled areas of the game. So the ingots are actually a limited resource that you should not be wasting. After the quality of the item is upgraded you can then improve the stats of the weapon or armor using the leather or iron resource which are both really easy to farm and there's an unlimited amount because they all respawn. So really the question you need to ask yourself is what is the best armor set effect or weapon effect in the game that I want to base my character build on before I spend all my resources at the blacksmith upgrading it to mythic quality. Keep that in mind when you're watching this video and also subscribe with the bell icon for more Valhalla content. So Assassin's Creed Valhalla has a mythic weapon and armor merchant that you can unlock in your settlement. He will appear after you finish one of the main story quests in any of the regions of England. So very early on in the game you have access to him. And once he appears make sure you come and talk to him. He's opposite the docks just here in your settlement. The next part is actually really important because he'll give you access to a shop that has the best weapons and armor sets in the game inside of it. Obviously the advantage of getting the weapons and armor from this shop is that they're already mythic quality so you don't need to spend any ingots in upgrading them at all. You only need to spend your leather and iron. But they are random on a daily rotation and there's another free that will change once a week as well. And these items can only be brought with opals which is a free in-game currency. I'll tell you the fastest way to farm opals in a moment and also how you can predict what's going to be on the store and plan what you should be buying. But first one thing you'll notice is that this shop sells both armor and weapons for 120 opals each. That's quite a lot so you'll need to spend your opals very wisely. You can also buy cosmetics such as tattoos or settlement statues for 50 opals and also mounts for 150 opals. Obviously the weapons and armor are the only thing that will give you an in-game advantage though. So there are a few ways to obtain opals in the game. Firstly you can ask this same merchant for contracts. You'll get two daily contracts that you can do every single day and also one weekly contract. Now these contracts obviously expire if you don't do them but you can just come back the next day to get some different ones. But ideally you do want to come here once a day just to finish these contracts before they refresh. Now the contracts themselves are mostly pretty easy. After accepting them look in your quest log and you'll notice that some of the contracts have a power level of 130. Don't worry they're still very possible to do though. For example this daily contract wanted me to kill a wolf that was right next to my settlement which I did in one hit. Or another one wanted me to free a prisoner in a camp and then take her to safety. They'll ask you to kill certain priests and even roaming enemies that are guarded by elite soldiers as well. So it's kind of just like a randomized sort of RNG mission that you get given on a daily or weekly basis. The most important thing to take away from these contracts though is that you'll get rewarded 5 opals per daily contract you do and 20 opals per weekly contract you do. So in total you can get 10 opals per day or 90 opals per week if you do every daily contract and the weekly one. 
So, like I said, you'll want to be very careful what you spend your hard-earned opals on. Another way though that you can also get opals is by finding them throughout the wilderness. However, they are deliberately very tricky to find and they don't seem to respawn at all. The easiest way I've found to find them is to go to the options and then put on exploration mode on the easiest setting and then you can fly your raven and life. check out all the white resource markers around. If you just hover over them you'll eventually find a runestone location. You can then just go ahead and tag it and walk over and it will be highlighted really easy for you to see on the map. That only counts as one runestone though. As you can see, rather rare, scattered all over the world and it really does beg the next question, what are the best legendary weapons and armor to spend them on in the shop? And yes, you can get great armor sets and weapons in the game for free beyond this system, but we're kind of focusing on these items for now. What you'll also notice is that these mythic weapons and armor in this shop are the exact same items that are available in the cash store that can be brought for real money using Helix credits. Now I myself am very much against in-game microtransactions, especially after paying $70 for a game. But in this case, it's actually quite useful because you can actually plan on what you want to save your opals up for. But to give you an idea, $5 is 500 Helix credits. And I want to pretense this by saying, you don't need to use this system at all to play the game. I'm playing on the hardest difficulty with nothing but the armor I started with and the equipment I found adventuring. Check out my other armor guide playlist to find every single piece of armor and weapons in each region of the game linked down below. My point being is that you don't need to use this system. But now let's actually take a look at these different armor packs and see what the best weapons and armor are. Because some of the effects on these armors and weapons are actually really bad and you just shouldn't buy them unless you just really like the look of the armor set visually. Are these worth money? In my opinion, no. Let's take a quick look at their stats. So the Valkyrie armor set, which you can obviously still get for free, increases speed after a dive of the Valkyries, additional increase to armor and attack. So it's pretty good. Especially the 5 set bonus additional increase to armor and attack is very good. Increased speed after the Valkyries though is not very good at all. A mythical spear that increases back damage when low on health. I don't think that's very good at all. Uh, temporary increase attack after parry up to 5 times is very nice. But usually you don't attack with your shield. So not very good. Next we have the Haldofolk pack. Increase attack after assassination up to five times. Now considering you can only assassinate like one to two people or so before you get that attack boost, it's not really that impressive. Now the speed increase is obviously nice for assassinations, but you can get better stuff for free in game. So this armor is really about looks, same with the horse. As for the weapon, increase back damage while when dodging, really really nice obviously you can easily get those back damage hits with a dagger after a dodge. The shield blocking temporarily increases light damage. This is also pretty good but usually I parry people with my build so I wouldn't bother with that. However the dagger is something you might want to buy separately with opals when it's in the shop. Then we have the Draga pack. The Draga set increases attack when hitting a poisoned enemy. Now if you have weapons that apply poison and also your build increases the damage you do with poison, you can turn into a bit of a beast. So this is the best armor set in the shop right now. So I recommend buying that with opals. Additional increase to speed and stun as well. Now stun is going to be really good on this armor set because it also comes with a one-handed mournful cry hammer. Critical hit temporarily poison your weapon. So this stacks really nicely with the armor set, increased attack when hitting a poisoned enemy. So if you poison someone with your hammer and then attack them, you do even more damage. Then we have the shield. It's kind of like a heavy kite shield that looks insanely cool. Increased melee damage while blocking. Uh, once again, it's all right. It's not incredible. I usually parry. Now, I'm sure they're going to add more buyable items in the future of Assassin's Creed Valhalla since there's so much DLC that will be coming out for this game. But I just wanted to share with you how the system works. If you want another guide on how to build your character or where to find all of the other free weapons and armor locations, check out the other playlist linked down below in the description. And thank you so much for watching my battle brothers.